Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. Our lead story of the day is regarding today's White House press briefing where reporters show up and push back big time on the White House regarding Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and their business dealings. And the White House is going dark on it all, folks. Before we get into any of the craziness, support a true American patriot by hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave us a short, sweet comment down below. The question of the day is, do you think Hunter Biden and Joe Biden should be indicted or at least investigated regarding this whole thing? I think I know your answers, but let us know in the comment section below. And also head over to baldbrad.com or any of the links in the description and pick yourself up a copy of Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America. It exposes the Democrat Party and progressives left's agenda in destroying this great nation of ours. Pick yourself up a copy today. Also become a true American patriot by joining us in the join tab below. We would love for you to be a part of our community. Without further ado, we got reporters here leading the brigade on asking questions about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, Joe Biden being the big guy in the Burisma dealings and receiving $5 million, allegedly. Let's go ahead and roll it. Thank you as always, Admiral, thank you. The House Ways and Means Committee yesterday released documents, their authenticity nowhere challenged. Uh, that included a July 2017 WhatsApp message sent by Hunter Biden to Henry Zhao, a Chinese Communist Party official, which stated in its entirety, and I quote, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows, and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father, unquote. So just a couple of questions about this. First, does this not undermine uh, the president's claim during the 2020 campaign and the reaffirmations of that claim by his two press secretaries since then that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with him? No, and I'm not going to comment further on this. We're good. We're good. I'm not. James, James, let me just, let me save you some, let me save, let me save, let me save you some breath. If you're going to ask about this, I am not. He said no, by the way. I don't, I know you do more than I'd like you to have. I am not going to address this issue from this podium. I'm just not. Of course you're not, John. I'm not going to do it. Look at that, huh? Thanks, guys. Have a great quick Kareen interjects there look how quick john kirby steps off that podium when james rosen asks a phenomenal question and it doesn't just stop there folks it doesn't just stop there we're going to keep going here because there is a long list of back to back to back questions about hunter biden and joe biden as well as their business dealings if you recall joe biden had no clue about all this joe biden's not the big guy joe biden's not the chief None of these things that are in emails, now text messages and all the stuff being leaked out. The White House is going dark on this. This is reminiscent of when you had the the documents, the classified documents in Joe Biden's garage at the Biden Penn Center and all these other places, like almost 2,000 documents just scattered everywhere. He goes to Ireland. There's documents lying in the streets of Ireland as well. And the White House did the same charade that you're about to see of, hey, you got to talk to the White House counsel. Oh, you got to talk to the DOJ. You got to talk to this guy. You got to talk to that guy. Because no matter where the press goes, they're not getting their questions answered. I need to highlight something really important. I know some people don't want to hear the man ramble, meaning me, but you need to catch on to this. What this White House and this administration does, it's very important that you get this. What they do in the briefings is they don't want you to know information. And so they tell people, go talk to the White House counsel. Go talk to the DOJ. And so the reporters will want to get her to say what the White House counsel and the DOJ said on the podium, and they won't do it because they're trying to hide it from all of you. That is what they're doing. So catch on to that as we go through this. Let's go ahead and roll it. Secondly, um, the president invited his son Hunter to the state dinner last night. Um, I'm wondering if you could take us into the thinking and decision making of why uh, the president decided to invite I, his son. I'm just not going to get into family discussion. Watch how things get spicy discussion. here in a moment. As you know, Hunter is his son. I'm just not going to get Let into me it. Ask you this. If, if Hunter Biden wasn't the president's son, would he have invited someone who had just reached a plea agreement with federal prosecutors? Well, two a, days couple, a couple of things. Again, that's his son. It's a, he's a family member. It is not uncommon for family members to attend 
uh, events at the White House. You could look at past presidents. I'm sure you have. So that is not uncommon. Uh, as it relates to anything uh, uh, related to, uh, to Hunter, I'm just not going to respond to it from here. Well, why not? Can I follow up on okay. that? No, I just called in somebody. Go ahead. Yeah. So, but I mean, so Kirby wouldn't answer James's question, though. Are you going to answer the question? I mean, not, I mean, not a reasonable question to ask with the President of the United States who's involved, as this message seems to suggest, in some sort of a coercive conversation for business dealings by a son. Is that something, if he wasn't, then maybe you should tell us. So that. here's the thing, I, and I appreciate the question. I believe my colleague uh, at the White House Council uh, has answered this question already, has dealt with this, has uh, uh, made it very clear. I just don't have anything to share outside of what, what my colleagues have shared, uh, and so I would refer you to him and the, share and the DOJ. Share it on the podium. Notice she's not going to do that. It does get brought up here. She does not share what the White House Council said on that podium, which is odd because the American people watch this stuff and the reporters know that. The, re the American people don't, doesn't watch the White House Council. Nobody, no, there, nobody has information on that. You have to like deep into articles and search for it. It's so ridiculous. Such a cover-up. not going to comment from here. I will, all, what I can tell you is I know that my colleague has dealt with this. He he uh, addressed this at the White House Council. I just don't have anything else to share. I just I just answered the question. I just answered the question. Yes or no? Was the president involved in the shakedown attack? Stephen, yes no, yes Stephen, no, yes no, Stephen, I just answered the question. I just oh, said I just. This isn't. It's not up to you how I answer the question. I just answer the question by telling you my colleagues at the White House Council has dealt with this, and I would refer you to them. Go ahead. Can you just remind us what your colleague said from the White House Council so we have it? From I, you would, at the I would I would refer you to them and they will share their statement with all of you. My question is about is your anything? statements from that podium. There's a lot of pushback happening, folks, and we'll continue. But do you see the cover up here? Do you see how they're going dark? They did the exact same messaging. We covered all five leaks here on the Bald Brad channel with the, not just the not just the White House Council, not just the DOJ, not just the National Archives, but also her and Joe Biden going dark in this whole thing, pulling the same type of crap where they sat there go, oh, you gotta talk to this person. And so you have the reporters. And rightfully so, going, hey, can you can you just tell us what they said on the podium here? And they won't do it. The reason why they did the exact same thing with these documents, these classified documents, and they kept referring them to other people and they weren't getting their questions answered. And then when there was something that was answered, it was never on the mic. They will not do it on the podium. They went so far as to finally get some guy out there from the council with these classified documents outside to finally answer questions. And it took them weeks to do it. This is a cover up, you guys. They're going dark on this whole thing. Be prepared for something to happen later on. We'll see, because Hunter Biden just got like a freaking gift of giving getting off on a whole other sh debacle. But let's continue. You stated Frustrated. that the president stands by his comment from the 2020 campaign that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with his son. And you stood at that podium yeah. and you reaffirmed that. Do you stand by your reaffirmation? I, what I will say is nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And I will leave it there. Anything else, what? I will refer you to the White House Counsel. This is not a change? I just answered the question. You asked, You just asked me, do, does my statement change? I just told you nothing has changed. There's That's that answering the question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stephen, I'm calling on your colleague right now. Go ahead. Thank you. To, to follow up on my colleague, is there anything that you can say with regard to this text message and what the president's son was alleging? Was the president there or not? I would refer you to my colleagues at the White House Council. They have addressed this, and I refer you to them. Go ahead. Karine, have you spoken to the president about this? Have you asked him whether he was there with his son on July 30th? This is not a conversation that I've had with the president. Again, I would refer you to Why the White House Council. Do you plan to have that conversation no. with the president? No. Did the president speak with the attorney general at all last I can't, night? I, I, I cannot say uh, if the president uh, had had a conversation with the attorney general last night. What I can refer you to is the White House Counsel's Office as it relates to the uh, allegations. Uh, they've already addressed this. This is something for them to deal with. I refer you to the Department of Justice on anything else if you don't want to speak to the White House Counsel's Office. And there was reporting earlier in the week that after the plea agreement was reached by Hunter Biden, that the president felt relieved that that part of it was behind him. Is that true? Can you speak I can't to speak his to that. I cannot Just speak to anything. the president's mindset. Again, I would refer you to the White House Counsel's Office. Get Dude. <laughs> there is so much there. Where to start? One, obviously, she's not going to answer any questions. But the big thing for her here 
is notice how she's separating herself from all of this. She won't even talk to the president about this because she doesn't want to be implicated in this whole thing either. It makes sense from her end of not being able to answer any questions, not even willing to talk to the president because she knows. Oh, she knows. Wow. Hey, did he talk to the attorney general? No idea. That's a big deal. That's a big freaking deal. Oh, uh, Joe Biden never talked to the attorney general regarding Donald Trump. We're separating ourselves. And all of a sudden, you, you can't answer questions of when Joe Biden talked to the attorney general about this whole thing. Really? Now all of a sudden you don't know, Kareem? Sounds a little sus, man. Because when, when that whole thing of Donald Trump being raided by Mar-a-Lago, you had a lot, a lot to say about that. The Hatch Act all of a sudden was not a thing. And then, oh, I don't know, when he gets indicted by uh, by New York City, Alvin Bragg, you had a lot to say about that. You knew all about the attorney general then. Oh, you know all about Joe Biden, the conversation that we had with Merrick Garland, whether that did or did not happen. Oh, you knew a lot about that. The Hatch Act didn't apply to that one, did it? Oh, oh, Miami. Oh, Jack Smith. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you had a lot to say about uh, Joe Biden. You had a lot to say about Merrick Garland, that whole conversation, whether it did or did not happen. The Hatch Act didn't apply to that one, neither did it. Now, all of a sudden, these text messages come out. All of a sudden, the dots are being connected by the press, and you don't have anything to say. All of a sudden, you don't know any conversations between Joe Biden and the Attorney General like 24 hours ago. Suspicious, folks. We all freaking see it. It's out there in the open now. We all have seen it. Us conservatives, those are, that are in this whole thing, we've seen it for a long damn time, and now it's coming out. Finally, it's coming out. Nothing's going to be done about it. Let us know what you think about this in the comment section below, folks. Well, moving into our next story of the day. Finally, we have some good news here, you guys. Finally, the NHL says no more to specialty sweaters during warmups after Pride Celebration backlash. Finally, the White House listens to their base and goes, oh, wow, that didn't go so well. We probably shouldn't do that anymore. Yes. Why? Because we're just there to watch sports. That's all it is. I don't want to see pride stuff flash in front of my eyes. I don't want to see anything. I just want to watch a hockey game. I work all day. I work all night. I want to have a brew and watch a freaking hockey game and watch grown men go at a sport, skating 20 miles an hour, blowing each other up and scoring some sick goals. That's all I want to see. I don't want to see all this stuff thrown in front of my face. You guys, you know I'm a big supporter of our military, obviously, in this country. I love it. I went as far to say, hey, I, I would I would not even mind getting rid of the, the whole veteran idea. Like, you know, standing up there and, oh, you know, we're going to salute this guy or that guy, you know. The reason why, it's linear logic. I'm just there to watch sports. I support our troops. I'm fully on board with that. I'm just there to watch sports. I don't want any outside interference seeping in to something that's historically, by the way, sports is literally historically for thousands of years built to sit there and get away from the real world. So if they want to do it the way with everything, I just show up and do the national anthem and, and, and do sport that I'm all on board for that. So one professional sports league is taking a step to stop politics from distracting from the game. Thank God. Thank God. Finally, Gary Bateman, the commissioner, which everybody hates by the way, in the NHL said Thursday that teams will no longer wear sweaters, specialty sweaters specifically during warmups. I believe that doesn't just go for the LGBTQ pride. They also would do one for like the veterans. They'll wear like camouflage jerseys. Um, I think they're doing away with that as well, which I'm on board for. Again, it's linear, linear logic. I am a supporter of the troops, folks. You've heard the show long enough to know by damn. I love our military. and I think a lot of funding should go to the military. So these sweaters, especially these sweaters were worn during warmups during the LGBTQ pride stuff. And he says this, it's become a distraction. Yes. No, duh. No, duh. Multiple players refused to don the sweater celebrating the LGBTQ agenda during the season, with some citing their Christian beliefs and others fearing backlash from their home country of Russia. Yeah. You know, what's amazing is these, these uh, leftist progressive activists constantly go after the United States. But if you look at the tr atrocities around the world and what they're doing with gay people in the LGBTQ community, why don't you focus your efforts on that? Why are you focusing it here? Focus it on what's going on over there where they're still skinning Christians alive. They're sitting there beheading gays. Like, why are you spending your time here? Why don't you look at the atrocities around the world and put your, put your efforts there? Huh? If you're going to spend any amount of your time and breath, put it towards that direction, not what's going on here. I've suggested that it would be appropriate for clubs not to change their jerseys and warm-ups because it becomes a distraction and taken away from the fact that all our clubs in some form or another host nights in honor of various groups and causes. 
Bateman said in an interview with Sportsnet after meeting with the NHL Board of Governors. And we rather continue, uh, we would rather them continue to get the appropriate attention that they deserve and not be a distraction. The Board of Governors reportedly agreed with Bettman, putting a stop to the teams wearing the specialty jerseys, but the commissioner said teams can still host. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So let's listen to this. So the commissioner said teams can still host politically focused specialty nights, such as Pride Night, Black History Night, and Military Appreciation Night. Teams can also continue to make specialty sweaters for those causes and charities and sell them to fans. So they're just not going to wear them on the ice, it seems like. So, so still they're going to push this whole thing again. I'm not for having any of those. Pride Night, Black History Night, and Military Appreciation Night. I think just do away with it. It's it, it's all going to be political. It's all going to be turned around some way, shape, or form. I I, I like Military appreciation, appreciation Night, but if we're going to have linear logic, then it just needs to be done away with. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Um, I think there's going to be a little bit of pushback from all of you, maybe regarding the Military Appreciation Night. As somebody, again, grandfather was in World War II on a destroyer. My dad was on a destroyer, was in the Navy. So I'm a military police background family here um i just think it could be done away with i'm full supporter of it but you know if you're going to get rid of one you might as well just get rid of all of them you know people have to ruin it but uh, let me know what you think about that one in the comment section below there's a plus for us in terms of getting rid of this woke ideology being shoved in our face moving into our next store we have ford motor company to announce new layoffs in coming weeks oh i, I was told i was told the economy's doing great we're just in a transition phase, you guys, from the Biden administration. What that transition phase is, I don't know. They haven't explained themselves, but everything's going great. All the while, Microsoft, Amazon, I mean, you name the corporation, all doing layoffs, but everything's going fine. Why lay off everybody if everything's going great? So Ford Motor Company could announce new layoffs as soon as next week. It's third round of layoffs within last year. Disney's also laying off people because they realize when you go woke, what happens, folks? Yeah, girl, broke. Sources inform the Wall Street Journal that this round of layoffs will primarily affect U.S. salaried workers in the gas, electric vehicle, and software divisions of the company. The reported layoffs come after the company cut 3,000 American jobs last August and announced earlier this year that it would reduce its European workforce by 3,800. The company has struggled to curb its spending as it transitions its electric vehicles, which is being pushed by governments, and reported a $2 billion net loss last year all while having committed to spending $50 billion through 2026 in developing its EV unit. Because they're being forced to, folks. They're being forced to do all these things. The company previously reported that it hopes to ramp up annual EV production to 2 million by 2026 and expects EVs to represent half of its global volume by 2030. Unless, you know, look, unless it gets cheaper, and I personally don't think the technology is there for me yet to have an electric vehicle. I want one. I'm going to wait. I'm probably going to need another vehicle. I'd say probably the next five, six years. I run vehicles into the ground. I've never had a new car, by the way. I've always had used. Um, I will run whatever car I have in the ground. So I'm not looking at getting an EV probably for another 10, 15 years. I put like 200, 300,000 miles on my vehicles. So I don't plan on getting one for a while. Hopefully the technology is where I think it will be. And I, don't get me wrong. The technology is great in EVs. Some of you might have an electric vehicle, but the price is just insane. $35,000 plus when I can get a, I can get a used truck or a used car for five, six grand and not be in debt. I don't have to finance anything. And the thing gets me from point A to point B. I'm not a flashy guy. As you can tell, I wear the same crap every day. I'm not a flashy guy by any means. I'm an old school man, folks. Give me a whiskey, a glass of whiskey, a cigar and a fire in the boys. I don't even need to talk. We could just sit there and have a good time. That's all I'm about here. I don't need all this flashy stuff. CEO Jim Farley has acknowledged the company will need to spend billions to procure materials that would enable and increase in EV production. The company has received criticism from previous CEOs about its operational inefficiencies. They're pushing this whole battery stuff, right? The electric vehicles. The, own, the, own, the actual miners, the owners of these companies have been on television saying it's impossible to meet the demands of these governments because we can't mine the lithium fast enough. And that's been a conversation with uh, these progressive leftists here in the United States because they're like, they realize they woke up to this whole thing and they want to push the electric vehicles. They're like, yeah, you know, the, e the EP is like, oh yeah, we, we, uh, we need to increase mining here in the United States. And uh, you had the gentleman, uh, Byron Donalds from uh, Florida, like mind completely blown. He's like, what, all of a sudden the, the environmental protection agency, the EPA wants to sit there and increase mining in the United States. All the while you gave us pushback on shelling and drilling here in the United States, you want to mine? Has anybody seen the amount of damage environmentally these mines do compared to drilling for oil? 
There's literally oil drillers next to freaking houses here in California because there's still oil next to houses and they want you to mine lithium. Just let that sink in. The same people that won't let Texas and Arizona build makeshift walls in the desert with the freaking the oil tanker thing, not the oil tankers, the, the trucking things, the shipping containers. They're all, you're ruining the environment in the desert. That's the EPA for you, but they want mining. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I want mining, too. Mine the hell out of it. I'm all for it, but come on. Does anybody see the hypocrisy here? So when it's for their agenda, they'll ruin the environment. When it goes against their agenda, you know, all of a sudden, they're, they're up in arms about the whole thing. So astonishing. People can't meet this demand. I mean, it's an insane agenda, you guys. It's, it's it's like AOC type of agenda. Get rid of all the houses. Get rid of all the planes, all the trucks. It's asinine. It's so asinine. So Farley acknowledged the company has struggled operationally uh, on a February earnings call. The strength of our products and revenue has masked this dysfunctionality for a long time. It's not an excuse, but it's our reality. <laughs> it's reality because you have these elitists pushing an agenda, these ESG scores, the DEL, like this diversity, equity, inclusion stuff as well. I mean, come on. We all see it. We all see it. They're running companies into the ground. That's why people are having to lay people off. The report followed an earlier announcement from the U.S. Department of Energy that it would loan $9.2 billion to Ford and South Korea battery maker SK, a loan that covers more than, geez, dude, these are such huge numbers, $11.4 billion the companies have jointly pledged to spend to on the venture. Oh, lovely. Where's, where's the U.S. Department of Energy getting their money from, you guys? Where is it? I mean, I know you know. That's why I'm asking. Where are they getting all their money from? Yes. Oh, we're loaning it to them. Oh, what's going to happen when they can't pay it back? Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to pay that back. Mm -hmm. People are like, that's crazy, Brad. Oh, that's crazy. You, you think that we, they would just do that? Yeah. Look what they're doing with student loans. Somebody take, and that's, that's private, by the way. I mean, I understand there's federal too and state folks. They want to do loan forgiveness because somebody took out money that they knew later on in the future because they did underwater, underwater basket weaving as a major or lesbian dance theory that they couldn't pay back their loan. Like, oh my God, I spent $200,000 going to NYU to freaking build baskets underwater or lesbian dance theory, or gender equity inclusion theory, whatever the hell that is, as a major, I'm not making $300,000 a year. I can't pay this off. No, duh, because you picked a major that sucks that nobody cares about. Why don't you become an accountant or a finance person? Something in business or engineering that actually takes brains, but they don't have it because where are they at? On the progressive left of the aisle. Let me get a drink of coffee here, folks. If you got to pick yourself up a mug from baldbrad.com, what are you doing? Look, I mean, damn. Mm, 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 that's a good looking mug. Hey, while we're plugging stuff, get yourself some merch, folks. Pick yourself up a signed copy of Bald Brad. Uh, Bald Brad. Pick yourself up a signed copy of the book, Trojan Horse, How the Left Destroyed America. I'm all over the place today. That's okay, though. We're going to continue with this. So Ford was out-earned by its rival General Motors in 2022, despite GM's lower revenue and smaller workforce. And Ford's annual costs are still seven to eight billion above where they should be relative to its rivals, according to a journal. Though Ford did not report above expected revenue in its most recently quarter earnings. So it seems like they're still doing well, but I'm telling you, this EV stuff, this agenda, this woke agenda, global warming, all this stuff, uh, is gonna drive these corporations into the ground or at least go in the opposite direction of which they want to go. Also, did you guys hear this is kind of a random tangent? Uh Greta Thunberg, rude, screw you, that girl. Uh so she <laughs> I guess she deleted a tweet. That she made a prediction that like all this stuff was going to happen by like yesterday or whatever. And it didn't end up happening. So she ended up deleting it. How many times do we see that from these people? Like AOC, we only have 12 years to live or something. Yeah, we'll wait 12 years and that tweet's going to be gone. And then she's going to push. It's going to be another 12 years. It's like, shut up. Go back to bartending. And our last story of the day. Bud Light is still in the news, man. They will not go dark. I'm telling you, if they want to do well, they just need to shut up for a while and, and let the air cool. Leave it alone. So they promoted some sort of a, a video here, and I'll show you this commercial about like family barbecues. I think it's for 4th of July. But they pushed this whole thing, and people woke up to it. People were like, yeah, this isn't happening. So hit that like and subscribe again if you haven't already. Leave us a comment down below. The question of the day was, uh, do you think Hunter Biden and Joe Biden should at least be investigated or somewhat indicted over this whole alleged scheme of receiving $5 million each? Let us know in the comment section below. So Bud Light, 
a beer brand has been embroiled in controversy since enlisting transgender figure Dylan Mulvaney to advertise its product. Has resumed tweeting after a prolonged pause on Twitter. So they went dark for a little bit. And I got pushback about this because you had you had uh, uh, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank say, saying, oh, they should just go uh, dark for like a couple months. And that's what they did do. I said, no, 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 no. They need to go dark for like six to a year. And I got pushed back in the comment section. Oh, how are you going to go against a billionaire? What do you know? Oh, what an idiot for going against Kevin O'Leary. I'm like, just because he's a billionaire doesn't mean the guy doesn't make mistakes. Doesn't mean he knows everything. And I'm, it's up to my opinion to disagree with somebody. Just because they have a billion dollars doesn't mean there's some all-knowing power. I think they would admit to that too. Looks like I was right. Looks like I was right. Just saying. Not, I'm not right about everything, but hell, when you give yourself a pat on the back, you might as well do so because I'm not right about everything, but damn. It's right about this one. So it says, quote, Crack a cold one. We've got an epic summer ahead. Sock tans included. But like tweeted when sharing a one minute commercial. Well, you guys want to see the commercial? I don't know. I wasn't going to play it, but let's pull it up. because. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, it's been a couple months, you guys. People haven't forgotten. But, you know, according to Bud Light, I think it has. Let's go. Hold on a second. Why are they struggling carrying a keg? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are these two women struggling carrying a keg of Bud Light? I was told there's no difference between men and women. They should not be struggling here. We just watched uh, uh, John Kennedy question a lady on gender. She said there was no physical difference between uh, boys and girls, men and women. Why are they struggling carrying a keg? I don't struggle carrying a keg with a, with a brother. What's going on here? Huh, interesting. Notice, I want to see if I can find it. Anybody else? Where is it at? Anybody else notice this? Like, just the just the idea of this right here where she's trying to close the fridge full of Bud Light because nobody will drink it. <laughs> that's all I can think about. Was, that's literally what's going on in the supermarket. They're so full of Bud Light because nobody will buy their product that they actually can't close it. The same way nobody's drinking the Bud Light at the party still. Oh, God. But they're going to continue to push this stuff, folks. Fun everybody. You know, what they need to do is just come out and apologize. That's only, that's literally all they need to do. Especially when you have conservatives or Republicans not buying your beer. I'm not even saying a lot of people go back to buying it anymore because they might've found another product that they would've liked, which I got pushed back on as well. People are like, oh really? Oh really? You think it's just that easy to buy beer? Yes, I do because I drink beer. I drink a lot of beer. I love the beer, folks. I, I told you I'm a, I'm a typical American guy. I love the good stuff. I love stone, folks. I'm sorry. You know, I love a triple IPA. I get a stone IPA in my hand, and I will never deny it. I will de never I never deny a stone IPA, double IPA. Rune Nation's my favorite beer. If you get a Rune 10 in the house, then, you know, hey, we'll do it. You know, it's limited, but I love a beer. I like I said, I love a cigar. We got cigars, right? I literally a pack of cigars right here, boys and gals. Uh, I, love, I love a cigar. I love a whiskey. If we're ever in town together and... Heck, we can get a cigar to have a glass of whiskey, folks. So Liz Wheeler said this. She kind of uh, agreed. They just need to apologize. So she says, none of this is funny until and unless you apologize for using Dylan Mulvaney, a man pretending to be a woman as your spokesperson. It's insulting that you think an ad about summer will make us forget our principles. The boycott continues. A part of me, yes, obviously agrees. The other part of me is like, man, it almost feels like you're holding somebody hostage in the same way that the left does it. So I am torn between the two, but at the end of the day, the boycott, the boycott continues, folks. I, I don't mean to be rude here because I know some of you probably drink Bud Light, but who the hell drinks Bud Light? It's so gross, man. It's piss water. I'm, it is. It is. It's like Natty Light. You drink it for beer pong because it's cheap at a college. That's why you got it. Stone's a little bit pricey, okay? The good, the good stuff's pricey. 
I'm not mocking Trump when I do the impression. I just love the man. I love I love how he does. He's a character. Hey, he's folks. He was a reality TV guy. The reason I bring it up is people are like, oh, I think you're mocking the guy. It's just turning people away. Then turn away. I do this for a hobby. Those that enjoy it will watch it. Okay, those that love hanging out together as a community of Republican service, they understand it's a joke. They understand, yeah, it's a little bit mocking. Maybe I'm not trying to be rude to the guy, but I love the impression. I've worked on it for a long time. Quote, denounce gender ideology or conservatives will never buy your beer again. True. Another quote, you know, there's no receiving or sorry, recovering from the predicament you put yourself in, right? I think there is recovering. I think it's going to be a lot of freaking work, man. You're, I mean, you're talking years of work here to try to, fix the damage you've done but the problem is is that they they say they care you guys air quotes they say they care because they they right we did a show on it just the other day where they said oh we hear you they, they don't hear us because if, if they see stuff like this they would obviously apologize and it's that thing but then they alienate another group of people but the other group of people they're going to alienate is a lot smaller than their base of which that buys their beer and not only that but you're going to have to not just apologize but you're gonna have to still do some serious some marketing stuff to get your people back. And that that's that's really tough, you guys. That's like business 101. It, it's tough to get somebody back. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think they can recover, but man, not. I don't think they'll ever be as big as they were. The new ad is apparently part of an advertising blitz for the belligerent brand. Quote, this summer Bud Light is setting out to have the brand's biggest summer campaign ever with a new easy to summer commercial that shows how effortless it is to enjoy the summer season. In addition to the new creative, the brand is announcing a national summer music tour and welcoming some famous NFL friends of the brand to the backyard with the new social content. Isn't that lovely? Like NFL friends, the same NFL that pushes political agendas upon everybody. The same people that literally getting paid millions of dollars are having like racism stuff on their helmet, you know, and like, oh, you know, black people are oppressed. The same people, like it, it just blows my mind. They're saying black people are oppressed in the NFL. When you literally have majority of players in the NFL that are black making millions of dollars, like more than the rest of the globe. They're, they're, they're in like top zero one percent in terms of earners in the world. And they're oppressed. <laughs> I just don't understand that. Like you have Barack Obama going, yeah, black people are oppressed, dude. You are the freaking president. There's no higher position you can have in the entire world. You are the most powerful human being on the world, in the world, and, and you're saying that you're oppressed. It's delusion, delusion. Anheuser Busch has so far failed to appease the large contingent of angry customers who are supporting a boycott movement. Last week, CEO Brandon Whitworth noted that in a press release, we are providing financial assistance to our independent wholesalers who help them support their employees. He also said to all our valued consumers, we hear you. No, you don't. No, you don't. Your value consumers are wanting you to apologize and you're not doing it. Holy Lordy, our summer advertising launches next week and we can look forward to Bud Light reinforcing what you've always loved about our brand, that it's easy to drink and easy to enjoy. It's not easy to drink, nor is it easy to enjoy. I'm sorry, it's bad. It, like, it's just gross. If you, if you handed me a Bud Light, odds are I'm going to deny it. Like even before they did this whole thing, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm sorry. I just don't understand how people can drink that type of beer. People say the same thing about IPAs. It's an acquired taste. I'll give you that. Bud Light's not an acquired taste. It's just, ugh. Anyways, <laughs> head over to baldbrad.com or any of the links in the description below. Pick yourself up a copy of Trojan Horse. It's a great book, folks. Look, I wrote it myself. It's a real thing. It's the real deal. How the left is destroying America. You're seeing it in real time, folks. It, it just support a true American patriot. Heck, support a conservative. Look what, look where you're spending your money. If you bought Bud Light before, now you know where it went. At least you know where your money's going into somebody that respects you and loves your values and is pushing those values out to new audiences as well. Might as well support the show. Heck, hit the join tab down below. Become a member, folks. Become an American patriot today. Back it up. Back our voices up with our actions by becoming a patriot today. Become a member. With that being said, folks, Supernatural Saturdays is tomorrow, and I'll see you tomorrow here on the Paul Brad Show.